Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV. Uh, we are here live at DCD Virginia, second day of DCD Virginia. So it's big. It, it's technically the wrap up day, but it very much feels like we are in the midst of uh, a very busy event right now. Um, so very excited to be here. I'm Candace Sipos with JSA, and we are covering, of course, the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in the digital infrastructure sector, including one and the same, Sean Farney, who a repeat, uh, <laughs> a repeat JSA tv -er. So welcome back, Sean. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So excited to be a JSA client as always. Yay. Best in the business and to be here talking about this exciting AI stuff. There's energy in the air. That's right. Energy in the air. All right. So I want to just talk. We're going to we're going to talk about two key things today. And one of them is AI in relation to the edge. So you were telling me a little bit about kind of how you think about this at JLL and just you personally before we started. So could you give our viewers a little background into how you think about AI at the edge? Yeah. And we had a great panel on this yesterday. Um, and it's and it's really, really exciting. Not only is AI cool and a new tech trend that's pushing this amazing creative destruction in the industry and forcing us to do things differently around cooling and power distribution. But there's a new real estate perspective, real estate model. And of course, you know, the JLL guy wants to talk about real estate, but the edge may actually be here after saying this for 10 years because of this tech force, which is AI, specifically the movement from AI learning, which is where we are right now. A lot of the hyperscalers are doing this into AI inference, which has some technical requirements to be um, in low latency environments, close to your, your consumers, and um, uh, in smaller facilities. Hmm. Because no one's going to build a 100 megawatt AI inference data center. It's too expensive and it's too hot, with some exceptions maybe at the hyperscale layer. But corporate enterprises and um, other companies know now from the board level they need to have AI in their value prop. They need to do inference to gain all these insights from all this training they've been doing. Uh, and they have to build these facilities and run them close to their enterprise headquarters, close mm -hmm. to their customers, and close to their, their use scenarios. So this supports a resurgence of the edge and becomes um, much more of a real estate play because mm -hmm. edge in smaller size distributed close to, to users means smaller footprint data centers all over the place. And there happens mm -hmm. to be um, a little bit of real estate laying around in, in the U.S. alone. It's it's 30 billion square feet of industrial, commercial, retail assets, which perhaps are, are underutilized. And these actually make great places to deploy modular AI inference products. There's a whole host of, of, of folks, including many of your clients, who are making AI in a box yeah. containerized and modular solutions, which will very easily deploy into existing real estate, connect, ping power pipe, and, and away you go. So this is a very exciting paradigm shift, not only in the technology, that's what's driving it, but the way we deploy in the real estate. Yeah. So this leads us into the second major point that we want to talk about today, the sustainability angle of all of this from a real estate perspective. So adaptive reuse, which is what you talk about in Greener Data. Um, check that out, greenerdata.net. If you haven't, uh, Sean has been an amazing supporter of Greener Data and has some incredible insights um, in, in both of the books. So could you just give uh, folks a little bit of a synopsis of um, what you've talked about in Greener Data in, in reference to adaptive reuse? Sure. And, and another sustainability plug, not only does, does um, AI support sustainability by moving to, towards liquid cooling, which can you know, reduce your carbon impact by up to 40% in the data center environment, it's perfect for this adaptive reuse. And that's, again, what there's a whole wonderfully exciting chapter about here uh, in, in the, the second volume about adaptive reuse. And adaptive reuse is really how the internet was built. The first round, the internet carrier hotels built in places like 350 Cermak and One World Share and QTS building in a, in a Sears warehouse in Atlanta. Um, the list is very, very long. Um, so we're good at doing this. And now as we need smaller footprint facilities with existing power, but one meg, two meg, three megs, not these mega data centers. Um, there, there is an ability and an opportunity now to reuse uh, commercial real estate assets, industrial, retail, so on and so forth, in far-fung places to keep AI close to their users mm -hmm. and be more sustainable because we're reusing 
a building. Um, and there's also another consideration for enterprises as co-location vacancy goes from 3% where it is today, according to JLL, to, to approaching 0% in the next few years and rents mm -hmm. go up uh, geez, in the last year alone, 37% for, for mm -hmm. leases under two megs. Uh, AIs ha ha are, AI builds in adaptive reuse, reuse um, of, of buildings um, supports not only an enterprise's sustainability goals, but ensures them strategically that they have capacity to build out in case Colo, God forbid, would run out of vacancy down the road. So there's all kinds of interesting tech forces and contexts right now. Um, but the big takeaway is the sustainable aspect of this, reusing buildings. We should do this. It's the original recycling, um, and it's out there and fits really, really well with AI infantry. Original recycling. I love that. You've used some great phrases that I think you need to trademark throughout this <laughs> interview. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sean. It's always a pleasure to have you on JSA TV. And thank you to our viewers for hanging out with us here live from DCD, Virginia. Happy networking.